What do you think about fat, especially animal fat? Is it the cause of diabetes or a part of its cure? If you eat animal fat, will it blunt your blood sugar rise or spike it? Well, we're not just going to theorize about this. We're going to do a couple of blood sugar tests and find out. A while back, I did a couple of blood sugar tests demonstrating just how blazingly fast potatoes can raise blood sugar. But I caught some major flack from some vegans who saw me putting what they assumed to be butter on the potato. Actually, it was margarine, and before you leave a nasty note in the comments, know that this was some time ago and I have since repented and eat only butter these days. But the vegans assumed I was putting butter on those potatoes, and they howled about it. They declared that, of course, my blood sugar went through the roof. It was all that nasty butter. In the minds of vegans, animal products, and particularly animal fat, are the root of all evil. If you're diabetic, it is surely because you eat all that meat and cheese and drink milk. Just forsake animal products, and your blood sugar will come down to normal. Your dog will love you, your children will keep their rooms perfectly neat, and all your co-workers will vote you as employee of the year. Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit here, but the truth is that many vegans have been told over and over again that essentially every health problem, including diabetes, can be cured and reversed by forsaking animal products and going to an entirely plant-based diet. Of course, they never explain why so many vegetarian Indians are showing up at the doctors with extreme diabetes, but that's another story. Apart from vegans, however, the standard thought about blood sugar spikes is that fat has a tendency to blunt blood sugar rather than increase the spikes. So you have two groups, the vegans telling us that my blood sugar spikes after eating the potatoes was due to the butter, and nearly everybody else says that fat has a minimizing effect on blood sugar rise. Which is right. I know I'm not going to settle the issue forever with a couple of simple home blood sugar tests, but it shouldn't be too hard to test this animal fat exaggerates blood sugar theory. I have here a sweet potato. This potato alone will be my lunch today. I baked it in a microwave and I'll eat it without butter, without salt, without anything except a glass of water. I'll test my blood sugar at 30 minutes, one hour, one and a half hours, and two hours. Tomorrow I'll do the same test Repeat it with a similar sized sweet potato, but I'll douse it with butter until it can hold no more. <laughs> Will the added butter make a difference? We'll see. For now, I'll eat this potato, wait 30 minutes, and start testing myself. So let's get started. I'll see you after a while. Okay, I've eaten my sweet potato and did four post-meal tests on myself with a glucose monitor. One at 30 minutes, one at an hour, one at one and a half hours, and one at two hours. Keep in mind that all I ate was one sweet potato. It wasn't even a supersized one, although I guess it would be called a larger one. My blood sugar levels reflected a truth that I've known for a long time, and <laughs> that is that potatoes are a nightmare for diabetics. At 30 minutes, my blood sugar stood at 168. At one hour, it was at 201. At one and a half hours, it dropped to 162, and by two hours, it had dropped further to 113. Thank God for a pancreas that works, although it is a bit sluggish. I have to say that this test demonstrates something I've been saying all along, and something that I've been constantly criticized for. I think, hear me now, it's foolish to only test your blood sugar two hours after your meal. Yes, I know that's the standard advice, but if you test it two hours only, you'll miss out on all kinds of important information. If I ate this potato, waited two hours, and then tested myself and saw a 113 on my monitor, I'd assume, if I didn't know any better, that the potato was no problem for me. But it was a huge problem for me. My one-hour post-test of 201 clearly demonstrated that. By an hour and a half, my blood sugar was on its way back down, and by two hours, it was getting close to normal. 
Now, I didn't do a pretest this time simply because I forgot, but I hadn't eaten for about five hours and my breakfast had been eggs, ham, and half of a low-carb muffin, so it would have been around 95 or so. But the main thing I look for is my peaks. When my peaks are under control, then I know that all is well. In this case, my peak was not at all under control. Wow, if the vegans are right and if animal fat is going to exaggerate my blood sugar rise, I'll be in big trouble tomorrow when I add a generous helping of butter to it. But I don't think the animal fat will spike the blood sugar any further, and I would guess it should limit the spike at least slightly. I'll still get a spike for sure, but I'm guessing not quite such a big one. Stay tuned. I'll be back tomorrow, at least for me, but for you, I'll be back in a second. I'm back. Kind of magical, huh? <laughs> so today, I'll eat a similarly sized potato, but this time I'm going to drench it with butter. I've got some liquid melted butter here. But I decided not to stop there. I had my lovely wife cook up three marvelous slices of bacon. I'm going to add the bacon drippings to the potato, and then to top things off, I'll put the bacon on it as well. So we've got melted butter, bacon fat, raw bacon drippings, well not raw, cooked, and then bacon itself. We're going to add it all to the mix, and you talk about animal fat, we have got it. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to pour on the melted butter, and then we will pour on the bacon drippings. Look at that animal fat. <laughs> And so we have got a lot of fat going on. Will that affect the blood sugar spike? I think it will, but we'll find out. Then we're going to stick some bacon in here. Three pieces of bacon cut up into halves. So I'm going to enjoy this particular potato a whole lot better than the one I had yesterday with lots of good old animal fat. Some say that animal fat is the source of all evil, but most say fat will tend to blunt blood sugar spikes. Which will it be? How will it compare to that terrible blood sugar rise I got yesterday? Remember, it peaked yesterday at one hour at 2.01. Will it get that high today? I'll be back in a few hours and let you know. Okay, the great potato test is complete. I know there are a lot of other potato tests that could be tried, such as boiled potatoes, fried potatoes, french fries, and so forth, but I can only abuse my body so much, and then I have to get back to my low-carb diet again. Usually, on days like these where I eat high-carb foods, I do my penance by eating very low-carb the rest of the day, more low-carb than usual even. So, how did it come out? Well, I hate to say I told you so, but it came out about as I expected. Yes, I did get a significant rise with the potato plus butter plus bacon fat, but not as high as yesterday when I ate the potato alone. On today's buttery bacon fat sweet potato, I scored a 136 at 30 minutes, a major difference from yesterday's 168. At one hour, however, my blood sugar rose to 187, which was way too high, but still a bit lower than yesterday. By one and a half hours, my blood sugar dropped down to 177, and by two hours, it was at 133. It was interesting to me that the animal fat definitely slowed the blood sugar rise and lessened the spike, but on the other hand, with the potato only, my blood sugar fell back down close to normal quicker than it did with the potato-bacon combination. So what's the takeaway from these two tests? Well, it's not that you can eat all the potatoes you like, just make sure it includes some butter and bacon fat. But we do see that fat has a tendency to blunt blood sugar spikes. No, it will not overcome them, nor does it eliminate them and give you perfect blood sugar when you're ingesting major sources of carbs like a potato. But it does help a bit. And we find that our friends who screamed at me that the butter was why I was getting such a spike in my blood sugar on those other tests were completely wrong. The truth is, if your goal is to get the highest possible blood sugar and the sharpest possible blood sugar spikes after eating, then make sure you eat carbs, carbs, and more carbs and cut out all fat from your diet. One further point this test makes clear is that sweet potatoes are not quite what they're made out to be. 
Some people will tell you to avoid the white potatoes, but they don't worry about sweet potatoes. They're natural and wholesome and no problem at all for diabetics in their mind. Well, sorry, but I consider a blood sugar spike of 201 to be a real problem for me, no matter how wholesome and natural their reputation may be. The truth is, this test was academic for me. The reason is simple. I don't eat potatoes other than for an experiment like this, and I don't ever plan to. So no, I'm not going to start eating bacon with my potatoes. I won't be eating potatoes at all. Not baked ones, not boiled ones, not french fries, and not hash browns. The starchy carbs in potatoes hit your bloodstream hard and fast. There's very little difference between them and table sugar when it comes to their effect on blood sugar. Well, that's it for this experiment. If you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up so that YouTube will promote it a little more and more people will be able to see it. And consider subscribing to our channel and then click the little bell icon. This will ensure that you'll be notified every time we post a new video. God bless and see you in the next video.